suspension setups on snowmobiles, do you find people are taking the time to do it? No. To, to, and to generalize, a lot of people will own a snowmobile from its birth to, they, to the time they sell it and never touch it. They, they assume sometimes that the dealer has, has set it up for them and often they will tell their dealer their weight or riding style and the dealer in their defense are very busy going through the process of getting that snowmobile to the owner and they often don't have the expertise too and the, with staff turnover and, and in the industry they don't have the, the expertise to really do a fantastic job of setting that thing up for the customer. They may uh, put in the appropriate spring if the rider is over 200, 250 pounds kind of thing uh, or they may just generally up the preload on the torsion springs if, uh, if it's that model equipped. Um, but yeah, in terms of specific knowledge on, on the nuances of the setups, that's where, uh, where we can help them, we find. For the average snowmobiler, is setting up a suspension on their sled something difficult to do? I don't want to say difficult, but, but there are definitely some hints and some, you know, hopefully we can offer that today. We can give them some direction in how to, how to set up, uh, what kind of rider are they, what are they looking for from their snowmobile, and, and point them in that direction on, on what to turn, what to twist, what to set where kind of thing. Can they see an improvement? Uh -huh. Yes, they can see massive improvement. You know, uh, I don't want to say unfortunately, but often we, we get involved when they're at wit's end, they're pulling their hair out, or, or they've complained enough to the dealer that the dealer has directed them here. And, uh, you know, they're, we've, we've saved many a, a sale. You know, we've had uh, ladies and guys come in here saying, I am selling this thing if I can't get it to meet my expectations. They don't use those words, but, um, and, and we, uh, we interview them, we ask them what it's doing, why, what, what are they looking for in that snowmobile, and, and how is it letting them down? And then we, we, we can target that and make huge improvements. The next thing, and perhaps the most important thing, is, is the parallelity of the skid frame. We put the, we'll put the chassis right on the shop floor, not on dollies. Uh, we'll put the carbides and the, and the track right on the floor and we'll lift up on the back of the snowmobile and we'll kind of get our eyeball in there and watch. After we've set the ski shock preload, we watch how that skid comes down. And eight, nine times out of 10, the front of the skid will come down first. And you can often wave a two by four under the back of the skid uh, before it will actually come down and, and touch. And when that situation occurs, we've got a sled that is very, very prone to excessive weight transfer. It'll, it'll dart on the brakes. Uh, as soon as you touch the throttle, it'll squat back and it'll want to run straight. It won't finish a corner. A lot of people will complain on the, on the exit, on the way out when I'm on throttle, the sled will, will understeer. It will go straight. And often that is a, a setting on the center shock, a combination of the limiter strap and the center shock preload is set improperly. And it's a dangerous snowmobile when, when that's way out of whack. For the STV Apex project sled that we're working on, we, we selected the stage four ski shock. The stage four ski shock from Elka uh, is an external piggyback reservoir shock. And when we have a piggyback reservoir, it permits us to have compression tuning, compression adjustability. We also selected the stage four has rebound. The stage three does not, it's compression or just only shock absorber. Having rebound allows us to, to control the recovery of the shock after a bump. Having rebound adjustability allows you to really optimize it. If the sled is, is uh, used on a Sunday when the railway lines are really beat up and it's very chattery, we can recommend opening the rebound so that the ski or the, or the rear shock can come up over the bump and quickly get it back down for the next one. And that will isolate the chassis. It will allow the ski or the skid to move quickly, easily, independently under the rider so we're isolating them from the bumps. If the rebound is too slow, 
then the chassis will ratchet down or pack down and then it will start to smack off of the bumps. And we've all felt that in our hands, maybe your feet bouncing on the running boards when you're going down that beat up railway line uh, or trail, you're just, you're getting hit. And, and the rebound allows you to fine tune that on a flat, smooth, super smooth groomed trail, and we've all been there, we can actually slow the rebound down so that we, we limit or we control the body roll. So your enjoyment goes up, your, your confidence goes up, and your, your speed can go up. You know, we don't endorse that, but, but we, we want it to be a safe platform for the rider. It's a big consideration. When, when, a, when the owner of an older snowmobile is looking at a $2,000, a $3,000, a $4,000 shock package, hey, that's, that's an, a massive investment. The, the riders will notice a huge improvement. You know, a, an older sled, when you go up to a shock package like something offered from Elka, you're, you're oftentimes leapfrogging the best package from the OEM. So you can, you can theoretically get a better working snowmobile than a brand new one. So in terms of the investment, in terms of the cost and the return on investment, it, it is a great, great way to, to, to spend some money on your snowmobile. You will be blown away on how much better it's going to work when, when you've taken the time and the money to, to put a shock package in your snowmobile. So after a day in the shop with John learning some tricks about suspension setup and getting the inside scoop on how these Elkos work on this Apex, this machine is an absolute baller to ride on the snow. I think the original owner is going to be really happy to get this sled back, but I'm not ready to give it up just yet. Bye-bye.